Welcome to Sephora. We only have an hour left in our day and we haven't hit our sales goal. I'm gonna need you to start some people off. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Beautiful and Bothered. As you notice, we have a very special guest. Hello. This is Kevin Benzaf. Benzaf with an A. Yeah. What nationality is that? That's German, actually. It's half German. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to have Kevin on because as the My Work in Sephora series, people always ask me about Sephora, but I always really wanted to talk to Kevin about this. So when I worked at Sephora, Kevin was there already. We were really the only guys there yeah. when we were there. So much of the skits I make were based off of what you and I went through was the only guys. And especially the area where we were in, whatever, which we'll get into it. But I wanted to have you on because you just finally left Sephora. Yeah. The first thing I did, I was like, oh my God, now you can talk. I was about like, I'll tell all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fourth Hillary, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> yeah. Literally, now you can finally, yeah, air it all out. You've been here already for a couple hours and like we've had to stop ourselves like 50 times being like, nope, don't say it. Like say it on the podcast yeah. because we can talk about anything but that time in particular was like so scarring for me it had such high highs and such <laughs> low lows so how long were you there total so i was there for nine nine years four months 17 days and eight hours so it was about nine and a half years it was going to be my 10th year in october that's honestly like Something that started to ring in my head that I was like, you're about to hit 10 years here. And that's all I kept hearing is, what do you have to show for it? <laughs> it's the look, Sephora, what do you have to show for it? Yeah, I spent $100, yeah. what do you have to show for it? <laughs> no, two products. <laughs> yeah. There was one manager in particular that she said, she was like, oh my God, you're so talented. You should start freelancing more. And I yeah. was like, okay. I was like, if yeah. you're telling me to go do this, I'm going to like, you should get this. another job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and she really yeah. was like, you should make as much money as you can. You're so talented. Yeah. She's like, take what you can do and apply it outside of here. Yeah. And you know, because Sephora doesn't do services anymore. That's so weird. That's all yeah, we did. that's all that's we did. All, from start to finish, it was makeover sweatshop. after makeover <laughs> after makeover. And yeah. it was just, that was it. It, it yeah. was a sweatshop of makeovers. Yeah. But that's what we were good at. Yes, that's what we loved about it. And I was talking to my boyfriend recently and he said, but what would make you happy? And I just kept coming back to this place of like, I want to do what's like what I'm meant to do. I want to do mm -hmm. makeup again. I want to be creative again. I want to put myself out there artistically. I kept coming back to this place of like, I think I need to leave. I feel like when you have something really going on outside of your work and then you go back to it, it really makes you realize how much Sephora is very like, we're your family. We want you to be here forever. Like you think about anything else when you're not here. Like it's very, a little culty where it's very like, this isn't your entire life. Like, and you start to see the other people as you get a life outside of it. And then you go in there and you see these almost like stepper, like, oh, big time. Yeah, yeah. Like all hail Sephora people <laughs> yeah. that you're like, okay. Yeah. Like, it's a little eerie. Like, like midsummer. Yeah. yeah. Very yes, midsummer. Yes. And it's crazy because I didn't, like, when you're kind of in it too, you no, don't really you know. Don't know. You don't know it. Mm -mm. Yeah. And that's the thing. Because the like, Kool Aid kicked in. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. And that's really what I started to feel too is that I, I didn't feel like, not that I wasn't belonging there, but it's like I felt like I was just meant to do more. So you I outgrew like, it. I was like, a hundred percent. You after it. You always were like full beat, like ready to go. And where we worked, the area, it was a lot of uh, rich clientele that were very shocked by like, especially then, this, what was that? Like six years ago now, it was a different time. Yeah. Gay marriage got passed while we were working there. Yeah. It was a different time. And people looked at you and I like, oh my God, it was so <laughs> exhausting being like gawked at in the way yeah. and they were so condescending that brand of people that and, we were with at and even time. more so too if on the days where let's say like now it was much more like in this part of my career too because at that point i was a little insecure not wearing yeah. so much makeup it was so funny though that like on the days where i wouldn't wear makeup those people wouldn't gawk they wouldn't yeah. look at me they wouldn't ask me questions they exactly. really wouldn't ask me for help i don't want his help i want somebody that's wearing me exactly and i think a lot of that too was like that insecurity of like why don't people want my help well what about the people who didn't want our help when we were in makeup well and that I that mean, was that... constant the amount of people that would look at you and i and then we would say like do you need help with something and they would be like 
No, it's okay. But they were like too weird and awkward to like be homophobic creatively. So they would just be siding up to a girl employee who was helping someone else already, clearly trying to interrupt them. And we're like, we can help you. Do you need help with right. something? And they would keep telling us no. And then they would be asking I would like purposefully stand later. by because there was a manager too at the time where she like would not tolerate. That. And she was like, if anybody ever says anything or does anything, like, especially when we would go to do makeovers, they're like, I don't want a man. What a different makeup. time we worked there in. I know. I, I don't want a man doing my makeup. That happened to me because yeah. I remembered I went to go do a makeover and a girl without hesitation looked at me and goes, oh no, I don't want him doing my makeup. I want a woman. And I was like, all right, I don't want to do your Same makeup. Thing. As if I want to be stuck in your fucking this for an hour. For an hour. So I was like, deuces, thank you for being upfront about it. I told this to her when I was done, like saying that I had no support for it. This is not okay, whatever. And the district manager, she just, she was like, what's the problem with that? There's no problem with that. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I said to her, I'm like, if I went in a restaurant and said, I don't want a woman server, I said, what more. are you talking yeah. about? Even proposed to her. I was like, so where's the line getting drawn? If someone doesn't want a black artist, doesn't want to right. this artist, doesn't want to that. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not like I'm working at Victoria's Secret doing someone's, you know, that I don't want a man yeah. coming in fitting my bra fitting. No, we're talking about an artist doing makeup, makeup on yourself. Yeah. If you don't respect a male yeah. makeup artist and you think that that's a, a hill you're allowed to die on, then get out of the store because most of the makeup techniques that are going to be done on you were invented by men. So if you're uncomfortable with it, you're not in the right place. And it's like the people that are homophobic but love going to Broadway. You don't get to <laughs> you don't get to consume our art and right. disrespect the people. And she looked at me and was like, "What's the problem?" She's like, "There's nothing wrong with that." And that was, I mean, one of the many things straw that broke that. I was like, "All right, I'm done." Do you want the culture? Or do you not want? It's like, well, that's exactly what I thought when you brought up not wearing makeup anymore and just being a guy, because I don't think people understand that. Like that is such a part of the gay experience or the LGBT experience where you're constantly living in these manic states, not by your own doing, by how other people are treating you. If you're going to work in full makeup, you're having, you have to deal with Okay, yes, the half the people that are going to be fine with it and treat you like a normal person. And then you need to deal with the other half that are going to take pictures of us without asking, asking if they can take photos with us, like we're against circus animals, or not wanting your help or staring at you, or God forbid they came in with their husband the way the husband would look at you, like they were ready to throw up. Like, and so you're living in that state. And then when you don't do your makeup, then you need to deal with the people that are the other 50% that are going to be normal and treat you like it's fine. And then the other percent that are going to be like, wait, why aren't you entertaining us anymore? You're constantly living in these high highs and these low lows that other people do not experience when you're just a normal straight person who gets to go about their life. No one can understand unless you're that minority person what it is like to walk into every single room. You know before you walk in, you have expectations. Okay. And when you're there, you're letting some people down. You're constantly in this seesaw that drains you emotionally. All right, now we're gonna answer your question. So we have, were you forced to recommend products you didn't like? So this is a great question because I liked working there because we didn't really have to. It was, it's not commission-based, which a lot of people don't realize. So when you're going to a store like Mac that's commission-based or like even uh, at a counter, maybe at Nordstrom, et cetera, it's commission-based. So they're really, yeah, they're gonna recommend something you don't need. Oh, yeah. They're gonna try to upsell you, but we didn't have to do that. And that was the beauty. I felt that, cause I'm not car salesman. I, I would tell people all the time, like especially maybe for a woman with more mature skin, where a lot of the times I feel like a lot of higher end brands, like back in those days, like the Guerlain stuff, it really was better for mature skin where I was like, listen, I know this foundation's $55, but I'm telling you, it really does have a higher formulation where it's going to look better. And I'd be like, are you going to, are you have to set this with the powder? And they'd be like, okay, what do I need? People liked me so much because I would like grab them and maybe I'd be like, go to the drugstore, get wet and wild translucent powder or Nick's translucent powder because it's just as good as anything here. Get the good foundation yeah. and then everything else I'm telling you can be drugstore. And I would like write a list for them of like what they could go get at, oh my God. at CVS. Yes. And that's what felt taboo too. Yes, oh was God, like yeah. Recommend stuff because how many times will we wear like Nick's or will yes. we use like real techniques brushes and like Honestly, like I feel like as a makeup lover and a makeup user too, if you're not using all types of makeup, like, and you're going to like pigeonhole yourself into like, I only use stuff from here and yes. this is all you need. And it's very like robotic and it's not real and people will feed off of that and they'll know. Yeah. They can totally tell. 
Yes. And that was the flip side of it. The best part of working at Sephora that I think you're the best part of going there and talking to the people that work there is you're getting people that understand how to work with every makeup brand. Mm -hmm. And people always ask me like what your favorite brand is. I don't have a favorite brand because no brand, every single product one brand makes is not the best. No, this brand makes the best foundation. This brand makes the best powder. This brand makes the best bronzer, blush, etc. So you're getting people who aren't commission based, who know how to work with 30 makeup brands, 30 skincare brands, yeah. who can cocktail you the perfect regimen. And yeah. that was the best part about it. But the part that I never really liked was when we did have an outside brand there. So what people might not know is like you have you have outside people coming for a day or whatever the case may be who like work for NARS or work for Makeup Forever or work for a skincare brand. And they would over the walkie be like, okay, like the person from uh, NARS is here today. Like, so let's make sure we sell NARS. And I hated that. Or remember the biggest thing when we were there was they hated us using beauty blenders because they wanted to push oh the God. Sephora brushes. Yes. So they used to get mad at us. Remember they took away the beauty blenders when we were doing makeovers yep. and we revolted because we're like, no, this is not our problem. Like we want to use a beauty blender. And first of all, you can't prohibit us from selling something or using something we sell. It's not like we brought our own right. beauty blender from home. Yeah. They sold it because you wanted us to sell Sephora brushes. That always rubbed me the wrong way. And that started to go away too, of course, like after you. <laughs> of course, I was there during World War II. Yeah, just... where I feel like, and it was it was so different too, because I would hear from like other stores too, that it was like store to store, it was like very different. They're like, oh, we don't care. We just kind of use this or we make testers of like the Laura Mercier puff and we use that too. And I'm like, what store do you guys work at? I was like, <laughs> yeah. we're not allowed to do that. Yeah. And not even joking, after you left, we were more like, we were using beauty blenders all the time. Like yeah. beauty blender was literally sending the store like a giant bag for BAs to use. They were contraband when we were there. Yeah. They hid them on us. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it was then, We had like five, we each had like five in our thing and they were like attached to our brush belts. No, we had to like yeah. smuggle them. And if we had one in our brush belt, like you had to like use it like secretly. It was yeah. like sick. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else asked, how much makeup are you mandated to wear? But Do we, you remember the rule? That five like pieces of makeup. Archaic. It was five visible pieces of makeup. Yeah. So like foundation, concealer, setting powder was one thing. Your complexion, your base was one. Wow, I didn't know that because I was used to get yelled at because when I didn't do a full face, I never went to you Sephora never. with nothing on, never. And she always used to say to me, she's like, where are your five pieces? I was like, foundation, setting powder, bronzer, brow gel, lip gloss. Because I did at least always have five pieces on, but yeah. just because my face was- Sometimes looked, lip plumper on the cheek. Shut up. Oh, uh, Kevin. <laughs> so one time I we were when we did artsy makeup, I wanted like a, a face gloss, like eye gloss when you see that wet kind of look. In a rush, I put on whatever I put on and we're starting to work together. And I'm looking at Kevin and I was like, my face is burning. Thank God he didn't put it on my eyes. But I'm like, my face is burning because I just used a clear lip gloss because I didn't have a face gloss. You looked at me, you were like, it was probably a plumping lip gloss, you dumb bitch. And it was, and my face was burning the whole day. Even after you took it off, it was still Still, like, oh, because it was back. It was like the only plumping glosses were too like Too Faced. The lip that, yeah. Or are in those should be illegal. They are insane. Like, during COVID, I will, and then we'll get to the next question too. Yeah. During COVID, we had to wear gloves in Sephora, and like it was just crazy. <laughs> what a weird, yeah, visual. Yeah. yeah. So it was just like it was so weird. It like felt weird, and uh, my hands were sweaty. Two Faced came out with these glosses that they were like it was like the full range of colors. So I was like swatching a bunch yeah. of different ones. I have a photo on my phone on the glove. I swatched five colors. My hand started to itch. I said, well, that's weird. Yeah. So then I like pull back the glove and I was like, wow, the swatches look more pink. So I like pull back the glove. I had individual markings on <gasps> my hand. It could burn through rubber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally burn through burn, rubber. Bro, yeah. So what is that like on your lips? Yeah, two face well, lip injections, man. Stay away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, required five pieces of makeup. Is it yeah. still that way? So no, they actually got rid of that rule because I think they started to realize too with like gender expression and everything like that. It yeah. started to become a little too like dicey. Well, that's like, how I was so. Well, you can't, why are you trying to force me or anyone to wear it's very it was like very strange yeah like you can't force somebody to wear makeup and it's like yeah. everybody's makeup journey is so different too and now with like the especially the makeup trends now i feel like wouldn't fly like the natural makeup then would not fly but i even remember before i started someone told me that it was like 
hair and a ponytail, the ponytail holders, like the elastic had to be a specific color. Yeah, it was like, like your too nails much. had to be manicured. It was a wing liner, red lip every day. Like it was crazy. So yeah. to answer your question, yeah. it used to be five and now it's like a pick your own adventure. Like they yeah. don't. Well, I always felt that way because when she used to come at me for that, I was, it would aggravate me because I'm like, it was a different feeling for me. I'm like, you're not the guy who needs to wear a full B. I need to walk to my car, park in the parking garage, walk through the mall in a full B. You're not the one that needs to deal with that nervousness of, is someone going to say something to me? Is someone going to approach me? Whatever the case is, you're not the one that needs to do that. So who are you to tell me I have to wear a full face of makeup? when you're not experiencing what I'm experiencing inside and outside of this store. I'm not coming in here rolled out of bed yeah. with like crust in my eyes. I'm wearing enough. Like, and yeah. it always rubbed exactly for that reason. It rubbed me the wrong way. Oh, and I it think always it rubbed, felt very, ugh. It rubbed a lot of people the wrong way too. Especially yeah. a lot of women that were like, what if I want to go natural on a day and you're going to tell me it's not good enough and then you're going to force me to put more. It's just, yes. it was very, it was very, very, Okay, someone asked, what kind of training do the store associates get? They always seem to pick the wrong color. I mean, that I think is, is subjective. That's su subjective on A, the store you're going to, the amount of training that the person gets to, because I feel like way back when, we got a lot more training. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more of like the artistry lab, makeup 101, makeup 201. Like it was the more advanced yeah. artistry classes. I think it just comes from yeah. lack of knowledge honestly totally. that well, these yeah. people come in and think they know what they're doing and it's just they don't have an artistic eye well i always found and i felt this way very much even doing bridal makeup was i think there's such a difference in a makeup artist that either you are good at doing makeup on yourself and you only know how to recommend clients your style of makeup, how you like to do it. You think your face will look amazing on everybody, the way you do your makeup. Right. And then there's the makeup artist that, like I said, you and I could show up in a green lipstick and we will make every single person we do makeup on look the best they should look in makeup, the way they need to look, the, the way it suits them. But again, that comes from old school training, the Kevin Aquan of it all, the yeah. old school face shapes and understanding their skin type, their texture, if they're more mature, if they've hooded eyes, if they don't, what is going to lift, what is going to lower, what's going to drag it down. The construction of makeup on every individual face is so different. For years, I did bridal makeup and if I was doing hair, and they had hired another team for makeup, it was that same thing, where it was the assembly line of girls with Kardashian makeup, pin straight hair, who made these poor girls who never wore mascara look like Kim Kardashian, and these girls were ready to cry because they were like, this is not, I don't want what your want. makeup on me. And yeah. that's just an individual thing. But I know even when I was at Sephora, the training was really going downhill. So the way the makeovers worked was technically you needed to be like certified. It was called to do the makeovers. Because they saw how I did do makeup on people, they threw me to the wolves. I was doing makeovers on people, I think for eight months before I was technically certified, certified because they were like, we need pe we need wow. you to do this. I was always of the school of thought if they offered me a makeover and I said no, they were never gonna ask me to get again. So I always said yes, because I was like, I don't want to ruin the opportunity. So, uh, so did you know? Exactly. So yeah, yeah, that bit me in the ass. So I always so I always said yes and then cut to that was back to back to back to back. It was literally the eight of us were like sweatshop nonstop yeah. Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Because we were in a, such a high I don't volume. Miss that. No, we were in such a high volume store that people really came there to get their makeup done to go and into we, the city. And exactly, it was really it. there to it was, totally. Yeah. And, then, like, not, and we had to close the sale. We had to do all these other things. It wasn't just doing the makeup either. That's another thing I think you be interested in knowing is so obviously so Sephora doesn't do makeovers anymore in that right in that way well, or you have to they're going to be doing it but now it's going to be like you go to like a salon essentially and you're going to be paying for like the service you're okay. not going to have to do a minimum purchase anymore oh, so it's like God. paying for like you're paying a flat like you go get your hair blown out and you pay the fee and you're gone yes and you could like apparently now there's going to be tips involved it's like a whole thing oh just, jesus yeah so, so back in back in when i was there we had to do it was 45 minutes and in that 45 minutes you would have to greet the client ask them what kind of makeup look they wanted which that took 10 minutes within itself and then you would have to go in the basket in a full store that you could barely walk through because it was so packed you would have to prep their skin so we're talking full 
serum, moisturizer, eye cream, skincare products, whole nine yards, prep their skin, grab all the makeup, do the makeup. So now you had 20 minutes, 25 minutes if you were lucky, do the whole makeover, which that was the Kardashian YouTuber era. Everyone wanted the pomade brows, cut creases, and we'd be like, no, full don't have the time. Yeah. Full beat, and we'd do all that, and then ask yeah. them what they wanted. Go grab the products off the shelf, bring everything back, check them out. Clean the brushes. Clean the brushes and for the next, the next one. one. With the manager screaming in your ear, in your walkie while doing it. Are you almost done? Are you almost done? Your next one's here. Your next makeover's here. By the time you were going on your break, you were literally like shaking yeah. because it was so nonstop. That, and that's the part that I don't miss about it is that no. it took the fun out of doing makeup. Yeah. Like it started to make it more of like a chore and I was like, this is not, this is not what I signed up for. Okay, another person. Most disgusting thing you've witnessed when people were trying testers. <gasps> Do I get me started. For days. <laughs> I know. This needs to stop. People stop. putting the lipstick testers on. Oh, and I think another question, which I'm not gonna find it, but I'm I read it before. They were like, uh, someone said, why don't Sephora employees stop people from using testers? We, we do. do. We do. We, we get do. yelled at. When yeah. I went up to people before and I'm like, um, like that's the tester. I want to put that on. They, and I think because they were embarrassed that you yes. were calling them out, they, they would snap. snap at you. Like, oh, well, I know. Like, and they would jump down your throat and I'd be like, okay, you put that cesspool ridden, disgusting I lipstick will. on your lips and you're getting mad at me. So I'd be like, all right, do it up. What do you want me to do? Okay, so I'm gonna describe this one time that oh I think God. you're gonna, and I'm gonna use yeah. this name, which Barbara will be very fitting and ironic, yes. that she came in and she was a regular, and all yeah. the time is she goes up to a YSL lipstick, Rouge Purgatoire, <laughs> yeah. she twists that up, number 52, and I remember the color, she yeah. twisted that up, that frosted peach, yeah. she stuck her tongue out a little bit, <gasps> and she put it between both lips, and she started putting it on both lips at the time. Tongue was touching the lipstick at the time of putting it up. Oh. And I remember watching her and I was like, I had to sanitize that before you put it on. Yeah. She goes, it's okay. And I said, it's really it's not. It's really not. No, and I was like, I'm actually going to throw that away now because yeah. it was in your mouth. He, it was you <laughs> swallowed it. Like, yeah, like yeah. you gave it fellatio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, people are unhinged. Like, it's what? It's so... It like lives rent free. Somebody else asked, what is the worst thing a customer has done to you? That is a really good question. A woman wrote primer on my face without asking. No, she, no. I never told you this? No. Yeah. I was- Did you have makeup on? Like a guy beat, but I had, yeah, I had like foundation, powder, bronzer, whatever. Like uh, uh, I had makeup on. She asked me for a sample of skincare. So I'm helping her out and I'm like, okay, whatever. And she was very much the client we dealt with, or you would just tell a rich, entitled, whatever. And I was always like a schmuck when it came to samples. Like I, because I didn't care and I always wanted to like rip off the store. So I used to give people, when they asked for samples, I would make them like five jars because I'm like, here you go. Like I gave them enough for like oh, yeah. six months of whatever. But anyway, <laughs> I'm bent down and I'm scooping out the moisturizer or whatever and I'm filling the sample jars. She's talking to me and I'm not looking at her because I'm bending down and doing the thing. This was the era where the Cover FX smoothing primer or something was the thing. It was. Everybody had it. Cover FX was the brand. And she's telling me about like, oh, have you tried this primer? It's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've tried it. I work here. Like, yeah. But I'm not looking at her and I'm like, mm hmm. I'm like, yeah, I've tried it. It's great. Like, whatever, as I'm like scooping it in. And then I feel that rich, entitled hand go like this and start rubbing it on my face. No. Yeah, I have never been in a situation where I felt the temperature of my blood rise that quickly. Like I felt, I was hot. I would have swung. And I, and I <laughs> was so uncomfortable because I never experienced anything like that. Like I couldn't fathom that she did it, that I started rambling, just saying like, I I'm like wearing makeup. Like, and I, as though that was the reason I didn't want her to rub it on my face. Right, right. But that was the only thing I could muster to say, like, yeah. to, to comp other than, like, don't fucking touch my face. She was like, oh, she's like, I don't see anything. Because she wanted to see what it did. Exactly. No, I, I don't even know what her point was, like, trying to argue with me that, like, you don't really have makeup on, so what's the problem kind of a thing. I don't know what, obviously she was so that's the, that's working the with a different here. setting. Yeah. So, but like, like I said, I was so stunned that, like, that's all I could get out. So I stood up and she could tell I was pissed. I was pissed because I was so, I was like humiliated. Like I just had never yeah. experienced that feeling, that degrading feeling. Of like, here, let me see. Just, yeah, exactly. Like, who do you think you are to like 
touch my face and rub something on my face without, if you even asked, again, I would have, would not have said yes, but that level of entitlement, like this is what we're talking about among the people we, in that area. But, and then she had the audacity after that to ask me for like something else, like more help. Uh, no. After I gave her the samples, like no. you read the room. I just brought her to the beauty studio and I was like, okay, I was like, just, just wait here for a second. And I walked away because I was gonna, I needed to go in the back. And I, I was like gonna cry or punch something. Like I was so pissed. And I said over the walkie, I was like, the woman at the beauty studio just rubbed something on my face. I was like, I, someone needs to help her or I'm gonna get fired. Like, cause I was so whatever. Someone ended up helping me and or helping her and like took over for me and I went in the back. Yeah, it was a mixture of infuriated and ready to cry because I was so degraded. And to this day, it's like that that experience mentally it like haunts me in the sense that like I'm still so mad at myself for not saying something. Like I still have such regrets about not looking at this woman because I, I really? honestly wasn't What's maybe wrong with you? yeah old enough to like articulate myself the way I would now, but to not look at at this woman and be like, well, that was one of the rudest things I've ever experienced. You do not touch someone's face without asking them, let alone rubbing a product on them. Like, you need to leave. Like, the fact that I didn't throw this woman out by her Lululemons still haunts me <laughs> to this day. Like, it, it was the one of the most. I don't think anybody has ever done anything unless I've, like, blocked it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody's ever done anything to me like that. The years I was there, it was just the Wild West. Yeah, it was really, unhinged. Like, what? I'm so sorry. Unhinged, yeah. Every interaction I have with people, I it is beyond my realm of comprehension that they're like crazy or they have malintentions or they're going to be mean. Like, because I just don't get that. Like, I'm not that way and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but like, I'm like, hi, how are you? Like, what do you need help with? Because I'm like, you're not nuts. Like, I can't wrap my head around that. So I would lure these people in yeah. and then they would let, like, a couple minutes in, I'd be like, uh-oh. And I realized that I was the only one who didn't have the discernment to realize this person was crazy. Because you look and every other employee is like up yeah, against the wall. Yeah, on the like, forehand. Yeah. And then I was the one stuck with these people that I would just be like, fuck. And then I was too deep. Because yeah. you can't get out of it. No. Yeah. You've got to see it to the end. Yeah. No crazy moments. Like nothing. I anybody. mean, I, there has been a plethora of things that have happened that I'm like, yeah. I just, well, I'm going to go home tonight and like unload all this trauma tonight. And I'm going to like write all these down. You're going to be sobbing at 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do part two of this You're going to call me at 3 a.m. and be like, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Um, somebody else said, do Sephora girlies really judge you when you walk in with no makeup on? I've heard that a lot. I I've heard that a lot. Never, never. never again, I think that's the, having, that's the, that's the vulnerability makeup. thing. I think people 100%. perceive the environment. They're walking in maybe a little bit more vulnerable or self-conscious. And it's that like, oh, they must be judging me. But uh, I can say my experience, anyone I ever worked with, nobody cared. No. If anything, I almost liked when someone came in with a bare face because I was like, ooh, if you ask me for help, now I can like show you. I could put product on Yeah, you. the worst was when someone came in with a full beat on. They were like, oh, I want a new foundation. I'm like, and I'm oh, trying to find a place to swatch and to not mess up. We take some of it off. Exactly. Like, it's going to leave you a little uneven. Where like when people will come in with no makeup, I like oh you're saying, God. I loved it because I'm like, Let's how many times yeah. did a palette come out like Modern Renaissance yes. when that dropped? Yeah. And I was like, can we play with this on exactly. you? Like, we're going to make them do mind. Yes. If we were slow, I was like, can I do your eyeshadow? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used to love when people. So, I mean, yeah. And not even just us, but every girl every, we worked no, with, I, nobody ever touched. never, I, like, I can wholeheartedly say we never touched people for not having makeup on. Because trust me, anyone that works in Sephora, especially who works in makeup, is like so foaming at the mouth in love with makeup that they just want to help you find the thing that is going to give you the oh feeling God. that they get from makeup. Yeah. That was always my experience yeah. with it. So I really don't think it was that. Yeah. Do you mind us asking for all the samples? Honestly, when it came to makeup things, I would make people I would, as many. You want to try because it's annoying exactly. to go back and return it. My thing I always say to people though, is like, I used to get aggravated when people would want samples of like powerful anti-aging stuff where they'd be like, oh, like, well, I want to see if it's going to work. And I would try to explain to them like, the only benefit of really any skincare sample is just to see if you're going to have a reaction to it. It's like an allergy thing. 100%. You're going to put it on, you're going to see if it agrees with your skin, but in no way, shape, and form in the time span that that sample is going to last you, are you going to see any results? Because that a skincare sample is going to last you maybe two applications. And if not, I think the only time that it's ever going to be like 
worth it is trying something like a moisture. Super basic. Like a, high, like a if hyaluronic it's gonna, acid. If it's going to hydrate enough. Exactly. exactly. But you're not, it's not going to do any anti-aging, any exfoliate, no. like anything, like big, big claims. you got to be using that steady for three months, four months, five months. Yeah, you're not going to see Minimum it. 28 days. Exactly. Or I had a couple people who like, because we were there so much, eat, sleep, and breathe it. I got a woman that came in one time, and this only happened once. I know I made her a sample of a Smashbox foundation at the time. And I gave her a sample of it. I made her a bunch. I made her like three. And then she came in like two months later. And I remember her because I'm a psycho. And I was like, oh, hi. And I said, I was like, oh, how did you like? And I literally, before she even spoke, I was like, how did you like the Smashbox Foundation? Like, I just knew right I from that exchange. I being like a server too, of being in the restaurant. Completely. Like, I just, worried. I'm yeah. horrible with names, faces. I will remember yeah. you until the day I die. So I said, I was like, how did you like the Smashbox Foundation? And she was like, oh, I loved it. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, and I'm like, okay, do you need help with anything? And she's like, oh, I want like another sample of it. And I'm like, no. But it was the same color you made her a sample. Oh, it was the same. I made her a, Oh, yeah, because that's what I mean. When I knew... Because oh, I matched it to her. When I knew someone... Wa like, I would make sure it matched them. And when I knew they liked it or it was right for them and they wanted a sample of it, I would make them four. Because I was like, it's not my money. Like, I don't give a f Like, I would make them so many samples. Oh, so it God. lasted this woman two months. I'm and so that's sure. what aggravated me. I'm like, you already knew I was so generous, generous to do that in the first place. You're coming back in and you made the mistake of outright telling me I love it, but I don't want to buy it and I want you to give me more free samples. Like, and that to me, I am very turned off by just... Like the greedy. Greedy, yeah. gluttony people. Like you, uh, you're now you're double abusing something I could have gotten in trouble for the first place. I'm not your vendor for free found. Like, what is your mindset? And that's the only other place I ever, the time I can remember where I was like, Sorry, girl. Like, no, you should have lied to me and been like, oh, I don't quite know. Maybe I should yeah. try. And I would have been a schmuck and did it. But don't look at me and go, yep, love I it. it. Can I have more free? Yeah. Like, no, like, <laughs> be a better liar. Like, I was like, I more turned her down because I was like, just lie better. Be creative if you're going to try to fuck me. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, so someone said, and I think they might be an employee. They were basically saying, like, how do you deal with a person that comes in saying, well, I don't know. You're the expert and won't give any input. Yeah, so I think that's important to say, like, you need to at least have a baseline, not even understanding, Your knowledge of what you wants. want, exactly, yeah, what like, the end goal is. I don't care if you barbarically show me a picture on your phone, but it gives me any starting place. Yeah, to, so I can further educate you on, like, the product and because when people say like in coming in well you're the expert you tell me what i need or if i ask somebody what's your skin type are you dry oily combination they're like well i don't know look at me exactly and i'm like, and I'm like well, what? well i can't if i could look at you and diagnose that dermatologist wouldn't exist like that Correct. that's a not that's not where right. you don't have x-ray vision yeah. like and it happened to me more when i did bridal makeup because it was a, a client that wanted a much more natural look unlike our sephora days people would say make me look like kim kardashian so i knew what they wanted oh, but yeah. in bridal makeup I got so many girls that were very relaxed and they really didn't care and they would say to me all the time like I don't care I don't care you can do whatever you want and I would almost be like I would like joke around with them I'm like girl pull up a picture on your phone because and they would laugh and they would do it because you have to understand between the the person and the artist I don't know what your understanding of a smoky eye is I don't know what your understanding of glowy is glowy could be everything from a slightly glowy primer and then all natural everything whatever or it could right. be Glowy primer, glowy foundation, highlighter to the gods, glowy blush. You could look like the Tin Man with glowy. Right. There's so, and lo and behold, I've had people tell me I want a smoky eye. That's all I know. I have no other preference. And I would force them to show me a picture. And they would show me a picture of a girl who had liner and mascara on. She didn't right. even have eyeshadow on. I'm like, what do you mean smoky? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't point that out to them. I would just be like, Okay, perfect. And I would give them liner or whatever. And if they thought it was a smoky eye, they thought it was a smoky like, eye. Yeah, but it's, it's just not knowing. Everyone has a di different definition when you're dealing with an artistic thing of what that looks like. Yeah, and because they might not know the difference in the big one that I would always point out to people. It's like when they would say natural, and then they would pull up a picture of Kim, like Kim Kardashian. Megan Fox. Or yeah. Megan Fox. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, this is neutral, not neutral. Natural. Oh my God, people. Yes, that is such an important distinction. And, and I was like, well, this is neutral, not natural. This is full coverage, everything. This is a full smoky eye. This is a sculpted brow. This is full contour. Yes. This is like, this is lip liner with a lipstick and a gloss and all of that. And they're like, well, I don't, I don't know if I want all of that. This yes. isn't just her skin. And I'm like, no, this is full glam. That this is, is genius to yeah. point out. Okay, so this is such an important distinction between neutral and natural. So yeah. natural means the makeup itself, the quantity of makeup on your face right. is less. It is light 
coverage stuff. It is your skin but better. Such a little amount of makeup on your skin yeah. that it is natural. Neutral is also very popular, but that is when you see someone anywhere from super small quantity of makeup to a Kim Kardashian, Sherwin-Williams, semi-gloss, <laughs> packed on, heavy, heavy, heavy. But the colors of the eyeshadow are neutral, meaning tans, browns, skin tones, flesh tones. Because how many times does somebody say, I want like a mauve lipstick, and then you walk out and it's like... Peach. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's like this orange. Like bright, bright yeah. orange lipstick, and you're like, well, this wasn't mauve, but yeah. that's, that's okay. And I'm glad we got there for you. So somebody else said, why do you only fill the samples up a teeny bit, LOL? Not you. And not me. <laughs> I would have given you four. Oh, what's the most yeah. shoplifted item in the store? Oh my God. I feel like it was always fragrance for us. Well, and now TikTok is such a huge problem with this really? too, because there's like- There's whole... videos about how to, to, how to no, shop. And it's like, how to steal from like Sephora. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like- Yeah, put it up your skirt. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, and, it's, and it's such a problem too, because it was like how to borrow from Sephora. <gasps> and it's, it's no joke. And yeah. like, people don't think that like, you, oh, like, I won't get caught. I won't get caught. And it's these young girls, and it's going after all the popular products, the Charlotte Tilbury's, the Laneige, the, the yeah. Dior's. I mean, think about the lip oils, everything. I am such a, like, Pollyanna bitch. Like, oh. I, this shocks me. I think you will get away with it, and that is your biggest mistake yeah. yet. I have. So what's the TikTok tip? Maybe so, we shouldn't share it. Well, and I don't, so yeah. I've never I'm like, seen, how do you rob the bank? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always been a problem that these younger girls were like stealing so much so often, but they were getting caught. And yeah. it was like, you know, it's like you're ruining such a big part of your life right now because yeah. now this is going on your record. I know. I can't even imagine. And, it's you know, not worth and it. I hope you're doing, like, I hope you realize and I hope you think it's worth it for beauty products. Because I know. It's not. And maybe it's the pressure of being a teen, but like, girl, go to the drugstore. It's all just as oh good. Oh my God. And it it's is. It's the same. And it is ridiculous. And I mean, listen, the markup on cosmetics, I guess, it is disgusting. Crazy. I mean, yeah. $40 for lip oil, Dior. My God, but that's, it's luxury pricing for these items. And it's like, if you can't afford it, it's not for I know. you, but, and it's just, it's amazing though that TikTok, literally there are these videos that I don't know how they're not banned because it's like how to borrow from I know. Sephora, how to borrow from That makes sense that it's teens though. Cause it's probably, they want to have the label of I'm wearing Charlotte, to, using Charlotte Tilbury. Cause you care about that shit. With but there's younger, dupes but from like Melania. That's what I mean. Like, that it doesn't like matter. They're just as good. And it's a fraction of the price. And they're, like, you can lie to your friends and say that it's Charlotte. And I it's know. Funny. Like, yeah. it's gonna be fine. But then when they go to the room, they're like, oh, you don't have that. And it's like, it's label whores. It's all it is. I know. And it's it's sad to see because these girls end up walking out, fully getting arrested. Oh. And these parents are so disappointed in their kids. And I'm like, I know. Well, and it's because TikTok literally. is like, unhinged. It's un. <laughs> yeah. Hit. I wouldn't even know where to be again to find these videos. like it's just like it doesn't yeah. make sense to me were most people you worked with actually decent at doing makeup do you have any colleagues who didn't really know what they were doing or who gave clients inaccurate information that is a big question so I, at least when i was there sephora was separated by like departments wow. yeah. yeah so is it your makeup whatever skincare fragrance so in makeup if there was 20 people, I would say there was only 10 people that really did make up on clients where the other 10 were more like just on the floor, on the floor. Sales, Doing sales, helping yeah. people, we should say. Yeah. But the 10 that did make up <sighs> did makeup. I will say I learned, including from Kevin, regardless of anything like I self-taught myself or practicing on myself, but that was even still influenced by everybody. 80% of my skill was learned from every single person I worked with. Oh my God. And you would pick up those little bits from everybody. Yeah. And like, it was like little things that made the biggest impact on makeup of like Jesse teaching us. Oh, like the one yeah. time I was like, you're, it was something with like the brow bone and the, the crease and everything. And she was like, oh, if you take like a white and then just pack it on with like a smudge brush and really like work it in yeah, and then just dust it away, it gives you a redefined brow bone. I know. If anything goes too high, and I'm like, yep. that like blew my mind. Yeah, there was so many things. I made like, a little like quick things to like fix yeah. the makeup if something went wrong. I was like, oh my God. 
I made a short on my uh, YouTube a while ago. I'll link in the description of the uh, video podcast that of you teaching me the press and roll technique with full coverage foundation yep. over people with texture. Oh, yeah. And there was so many things. There, it was always great when you, if you rarely had a makeover during the week when it was really slow, whatever artist was on it, which it normally would be like the most senior artists who was working because they obviously everyone wanted to do the makeovers. And that's the thing. It was a different feeling back then. It was like everyone was yeah. just loved doing makeup so much. It was so artistry focused where I would just stand there and watch these girls yeah. and you do these makeovers on people. And just when I was really starting out, my jaw would be on the floor. I'm just like, wow. When I started out, like I said, when I was thrown to the wolves, I would do these makeovers and I would have one of the girls would be watching me. And they were so sweet to say, Rosita said to me one time, I was doing makeover on a woman with a little bit more mature skin. And I was too afraid. I was used to it with hair because I'd gone to cosmetology school. But when it came to makeup, I was very afraid to really touch someone, like really get, oh, get in like, there. Yeah, your hand like to, exactly. Because like, it's a, their eye. And, yes, it's yeah. a weird thing when you're doing makeup on someone. Oh, you don't yeah. realize you're touching their face like a strange. So you, it's weird to, you know. So I was doing her eyeliner and I was putting it on and I put on the eyeliner and Rosita was her name. She was like our most high up artist at the time was watching me. And she so sweetly, I was done doing the eye and she leans in and she goes, can I show you something? And I'm like, yeah. And she comes up and she puts her finger on the eyelid of the woman and really lifts it and showed me that because I was too afraid to really lift the eyelid, where I'd done the liner, where it looked good, where I did it, it was clean, it was smooth, but because I didn't lift the lid enough, there was a whole space of flesh tone underneath my liner where she taught me, she was like, depending on the age of the skin, et cetera, you have to really get all the way down to the lash line. Like these things that you are not gonna find on YouTube. Right. Like this is the difference of working amongst other artists. You yeah. learn these things. Jesse taught me all of it, the hourglass powder on mature skin, the setting it with that, and to me, to date, and I still am friends with her. One of the most breathtaking artists I ever worked with was Alyssa. Oh, that's true. I will never forget. I still remember the exact makeup so. look I watched her do on a girl one time, which she got in trouble for from the manager because they said she took too long. But I remember looking at her and it was the first time I had seen someone else in person do makeup on someone that it took my breath away. It took my breath away. And it was just, but that was the caliber of artists we all were when yeah. we were at that store. And it's sad to see now because so many of these people won't get that. I know, that's what breaks my heart. That there's no There's services. nowhere to go for that education anymore. And like, all, like in seeing that and getting to like experience that, there is nowhere I know. that is doing it. Guys, I can't even tell you. Him and I, when you got here, we had a five minute nonstop, no breaths taken. All about Pat McGrath's five recent launches, the packaging, the high quality, low quality, the difference in the formula. Like if you guys are interested in two nut jobs that can talk <laughs> about one eyeshadow palette from one brand and the history of their formula change and how it's ripped off clients, not ripped off clients, how the price has not been indicative of the price change. The Like we are so insane. If you guys really like this level of like psycho makeup, beauty content. Kevin is the one to have with me because we are like nuts and I will have you with me as much as possible because do it. it gets me off talking about makeup like it. this. People don't get it. No, yeah, people it don't understand. On. Thank you for watching, listening to another episode of Beautiful and Bothered. Kevin's camera died, so we're not dealing with changing the batteries nope. again. <laughs> subscribe on Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review if you can. Make sure to subscribe to the Beautiful and Bothered YouTube channel for weekly video episodes. Thank you to Kevin. My name is John your host. I love spending this time with you each week. Wherever you are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. Bye, guys. See Bye you guys. next week. <laughs>